diagnostics to push the boundaries of engine research. Conventionally, you know that when we have to do the experiments in engines, normally we have an all metal engine, we put pressure transducer, we put shaft and puller, we try to acquire the pressure tank data and then do the analysis and then we try to know what is happening inside the combustion chamber. So this is as far as the combustion is concerned. When we want to investigate emissions, what we do traditionally is that we have analyzers, we put the emission probe in the exhaust system, take the sample out, do the analysis using different techniques such as flame ionization detection, non-dispersive infrared, chemical sense detection and detect whatever species of interest we want to figure out. But what happens is that we lose a lot of details, okay. We lose a lot of details in the sense that there is no way you can a, working in a conventional manner we can figure out when the NOx ring is forming inside a engine combustion chamber, at, in under what conditions, in which zones of the combustion chamber, at what crank angle. So all those details are lost and what we get is cycle averaged emission data. So can we change the paradigm? So the answer is yes, we can have a different paradigm and that paradigm we can figure out all these things in, in greater detail using optical diagnostics. Now having the optical diagnostics or optical access in the engine is quite challenging. As you know, it's engine is a very, very tough machine where the pressure where the pressure in an engine changes from sub atmospheric pressure to 70 bar, 80 bar in modern diesel engines it can go to as high as 225 bars. And this temperature can rise from 30 degree centigrade all the way to 2000 degree centigrade. And this happens maybe 20, 30, 50 times per second. So things are highly, highly dynamic. Now in such a highly dynamic environment where the temperature is changing all the time, the pressure is changing all the time, if you want to have any optical access it becomes very, very challenging because metals can tolerate such a high mechanical and thermal stress. But anything which has optical properties through which you can see having such kind of mechanical properties is quite a challenge. So the, there are two approaches that are taken to resolve this issue and to have optical access in the engine. The first approach is that the top part of the cylinder liner is made of high quality quartz okay. and it is just the top part not the entire cylinder because that is when most of the things are happening. So this is a approach which is used in the single cylinder optical research engine. Of course that makes it very, very expensive. So the optical engine is very expensive, the diagnostics is very expensive and the limitation of such a approach is that you can run the engine only in low speeds and low load conditions. And the reason is that in most of the cases the peak cylinder pressure in this optical configuration is only limited to 60 bar. So that means if you, if you increase the P max inside the engine more than 60 bar, the window will break into fragments. It will lead to an accident, a very expensive accident. Okay. So that is one very big limitation. So the fundamental experiments where you want to understand combustion need not be at very high load and speed conditions. They can be done in the optical research engine. But now some questions, uh, some people want to do experiment at high load, high speed conditions as well. How do we do that? So that is done by another talk, uh, technique which is called engine endoscopy. So in the engine endoscopy, we drill a hole in the cylinder head and we make some uh, adaptation of the window, uh, optical window and put an endoscope. So endoscope is nothing but a device which is having rod lenses okay? and at the end of the rod lenses you have a eyepiece, you put a camera and you capture the image. Okay. This since you have not made a huge hole inside the cylinder head and cylinder, cylinder itself, you can really go to very high temperatures and pressure. 
so this can be done in any regular engine suppose mahindra comes to me that okay this is the engine and i want to understand combustion in my engine it's very easy for me drill a hole make the adaptation do the endoscopy very easy but if they come and say that okay i want optical diagnostics using full cylindrical axis using my engine is very difficult what then i will have to do is i have to take all the important data from their engine such as bore stroke compression ratio fuel injection equipment and then prepare a special engine having those characteristics do the tests in a single cylinder engine and then adapt the results into the multi cylinder engine it's a go, it has reasonably good transferability from single cylinder to multi cylinder so these are some of the approaches which are used in optical diagnostics so as i mentioned the title of my talk is single cylinder optical research engine and endoscopy pushing the horizons for engine research <coughs> so as i mentioned there are uh, two ways of optical access one is full optical access the optical access is maximized uh, by providing a full window to allow application of complex optical diagnostic techniques while maintaining minimum ne necessary operability of the engine or components that means you are trying to be you are you are compromising on the operability part need not be full load full speed and you want but you want to employ full suit of your optical diagnostics so when i say full suit of optical diagnostics that means you can do particle imaging velocimetry in my previous slide i showed you there are many techniques that can be applied scattering you know uh, laser induced incandescence laser induced fluorescence and many of these techniques are also talked about by professor kushari as well so all those techniques can actually be applied in engine which is having full optical access and let me tell you this is a very very new area in fact <coughs> nobody has a manual of uh, things to do if you want to say for example if you want to understand how the flow is happening inside the combustion chamber no manufacturer is going to give you a manual that do this do this do this do this and you will have results so these techniques are still in the development stage they are still evolving you have to basically use your own uh, thinking to develop your own strategy for employing these techniques the beauty of this is that if you have full optical access you can apply a wide range of diagnostic techniques <coughs> on the other hand if you are having partial uh, optical access using endoscopy technique how many of you did see endoscope in my lab was it shown okay so endoscope uh, uh, just to school can he bring it endoscope nikhil ko phone kar do zara because many of them have not seen so let us show them so endoscope is nothing but a rod a rod which is having lot of lenses rod lenses it could be 4 mm diameter 6 mm diameter 8 mm diameter but normally for the engine since you want minimum incision you go for 4 mm diameter and at the top you have the eye piece on that eye piece you put a camera this camera grabs the pictures of whatever is being seen at the end so <coughs> so basically since you are having only a small hole you maintain full engine operability but the optical access and diagnostic techniques will be very very limited because now you are having a very small view so basically let me just show you this is my eye piece this is my <coughs> endoscope suppose this is my cylinder head so my viewing angle will be only this this will be the zone okay i can have a different kind of viewing angle where i can have a viewing angle like this okay and if i can also have a viewing angle like this this will be my viewing angle so these are different angles of endoscope for example this is the axis and this is the axis this angle can be 0 degree then you are looking vertical if this is 30 degree you are looking like this 
it is 70 degree, you are looking like this. So, generally these are the three angles 0, 30 and 70 which are available commercially, you can buy them and use them. <coughs> However, you know all the techniques that I mentioned LI, uh, LII, LIF, PIV, they cannot be employed in this. You can only do visualization and endoscopic PIV is still under development, other techniques are not really employed at least I do not know about them. So, endoscopic access put the emphasis on organizing and extending realistic engine operating conditions. So, that means if you have to do fundamental investigations at low load and low speed, low speeds you can go for full optical access, if you have to do investigations at high loads and high speeds you can go to endoscopic access. <coughs> so, optical diagnostics is very essential nowadays especially because we know that up to Euro 4 we could meet the Euro 4 norms just by tweaking different parameters optimizing the combustion optimizing the spark timing without really knowing what it is doing inside the engine combustion chamber. But Euro 5, Euro 6 and the future norms, the norms are so tight that without actually understanding what is happening inside the engine combustion chamber it is very difficult to meet them. If you want to meet them without understanding you can still meet them, but then you will need very expensive exhaust gas after treatment suit. Okay. Their running cost is very high, their initial cost will also be very high. So, I think in order to meet the environmental issues such as emission regulations it is very important that we exactly know what is happening. We exactly control the flow of air inside the combustion chamber, we exactly control the mixing of the fuel and air, we, we avoid the zones of rich fuel air mixture formation, we avoid the zones where there are high temperatures inside the combustion chamber and so on. <coughs> and obviously, people want minimum fuel consumption, so fuel efficiency uh, has the same issues, we want to control the fuel efficiency, we want to increase the fuel efficiency and minimize the fuel consumption. Better understanding of the in cylinder processes is required for minimizing the fuel consumption as well as for meeting the emission norms and then to simulate fuel injection and combustion in the cylinder and to use optical diagnostics to visualize other in, in cylinder processes. And then most importantly many of the times you know half of the engine and combustion researchers may be more than half are actually doing computations, simulations of different things. Now, when you do simulations the one important question that is all the time asked is how are you sure that what you are doing is correct. Okay. So, the experimental validation of simulation results is a very very important parameter and optical diagnostics is something which gives real insights into what is happening and it becomes a very important tool for modelers. So, experimental guys prepare the data, modeling guys use the models come out with some results, validate their models with the experiment if, they, if it matches fine great and then they go ahead and make the predictions based on whatever has been validated. So, it is a very very important uh, requirement for simulation experts as well. <coughs> the challenges in the optical access to the engine there are many as I said the very high <coughs> non steady pressure and temperature conditions <coughs> I, I gave you the ranges. So, this leads to very high mechanical and thermal stresses and so therefore, ordinary materials do not survive. For example, if you just want to use silica glass any ordinary glass, whatever thick you may make it will neither have good optical properties nor it will be able to withstand these kind of thermal and mechanical stresses. So, special materials are required to have optical access, what are these special materials? So, these could be fused silica, these could be uh, uh, quartz high quality quartz. Okay. So, these are expensive materials that are used and even the manufacturing processes are very very special, because you know you in order to have realistic geometry they have to be circular. Okay. Once you want to make a ring which is optical you do not want the picture to get distorted. So, the quality of fabrication of the quartz part is also very very challenging. I think there are only a very few handful manufacturers in the whole world which manufacture the uh, quartz windows for optical engines not everybody can do it. There is none in India by the way, I know of one in Korea and one in uh, Germany 
uh, maybe one in UK. Okay, very few people make it. <coughs> one of the big challenge of the optical window is that in the optical window you cannot have any lubrication. The moment you have lubrication on the inner surface, your optical quality will deteriorate, you will not be able to see anything. So, obviously, there cannot be any lubrication. Okay. Since there is no lubrication, there is no heat removal, and if there is no heat removal, there is no heat, the, the window will get heated up. So, if the window gets heated up, it may break because it will not have the same coefficient of thermal expansion as the metal parts. Okay. So, that makes it extremely, extremely challenging. What is the solution? The solution is very simple that you run the engine only for 30 seconds, close the engine before it becomes prohibitively hot. Okay. So, this is what is done in order to avoid this problem. Then fouling of the optical access windows. <coughs> if you are if you are using an optical engine which is compression ignition diesel engine, diesel engines inherently produce soot. You can do whatever you want, soot will definitely be produced. Windows are relatively colder. So, because of this there will be thermophoretic uh, forces acting on the particles and they will push these particles towards colder surfaces which is liner. So, there will be some kind of attraction between the soot particles and window. So, within 20 30 second your window will get collect lot of soot and as a result you will not be able to see anything. So, when you do the experiments after 30 seconds experiment you have to actually clean the liner and for cleaning the liner you have to remove the complete valve train, you have to remove the cylinder head and then clean it. So, that itself makes it extremely challenging. So, there has to be some kind of requirement for development of some kind of a automation method by which you can quickly clean it up, because if you are doing experiments you have to do experiments several times and then it takes a lot of time. Then <coughs> you know support structure should not block the optical access. I tell you there is a metal and then there is a glass and then on top of it again there is metal cylinder head. Now, how do you hold it together? You cannot weld glass with the liner or glass with the cylinder head. So, what you do you have some kind of pillars on all four sides through which you clamp it. So, that there is no leakage. This is the only way by which you can make it leak proof and make it to keep it together just like in a realistic in geometry. But the problem is that these pillars that you are putting they have to be strong enough also and they have to be quite big and once they are quite big your view, view into the cylinder will be restricted by them. So, this is one of the realistic problem that one experiences is that the support structure actually blocks quite a bit of uh, optical access. And then when we want to look inside the engine combustion chamber, you want a flat view, but the fact of the life is that the window has to be circular. So, if the window has to be circular, then the view will be different than a flat window. Okay. So, there is a requirement for a flat window, but the fact of the matter is that you can only have circular window. So, how do you manage that? So, that problem is managed in a very smart way. So, what you do is essentially you take a calibration plate, when you say calibration plate it is a metal plate having dots put at a regular interval. That means, the di distance between each uh, dot is fixed in x direction as well as in y direction. Okay and you put it in the uh, on top of the piston and then you take the picture. Okay. So, when you see it through the camera via a circular uh, optics the distance will not be the same distance will change, because you are watching by via a curved lens. So, you take that image and then you know that this point is should be at this distance, but when I am seeing it through curved this is the direction and you develop some kind of a calibration pattern. So, when you ca capture the regular images of combustion you use this calibration to correct your images. So, now instead of you know whatever aberrations have crept into your uh, images 
because of the curvature of the window can now be taken care of by this calibration method. Okay. So, this is how you take care of the optical flat optical window part and then <coughs> inside the engine you know there is a lot of scattering you are watching the light goes through the first layer of window the second layer the light goes some of it gets reflected scattered. So, that also creates a uh, some kind of a visual distortion. So, you you actually filter that out and then <coughs> maintaining realistic engine geometry is extremely critical. When we say maintaining realistic engine geometry in our lab what you saw is real geometry engine, but many a times what happens people do not worry about maintaining realistic geometry. For example, if you want a flat optical window somebody may say why should I have a circular piston why cannot I have a square piston or a rectangular piston nobody stops you <coughs> as long as you are just studying the flow nobody stops you. So, people have made all kinds of geometries oval geometries square geometries just to study the flow obviously, getting combustion in such an engine will be rather difficult I am not aware of square pistons having combustion, but, <coughs> but if you want to have combustion I think the the round geometry is the best. <coughs> so, full optical access when you have full optical access you have to have complete transparent piston head and complete transparent cylinder liner two things. So, optical access from the bottom and optical access from the top endoscopic you know there are endoscopic windows some of them can be optical fiber based as well and the common materials that are used are high quality quartz and sapphire in both cases. This is just an example <coughs> of a spark ignition engine here you can see the spark plug and these are the two inlet and exhaust valves and this is a pen roof design of uh, cylinder head <coughs> and this is the cylinder liner this is about 45 millimeter. Okay. In case of a spark ignition engine you can have 45 millimeter 50 millimeter optical access. In case of a compression ignition engine you hardly have more than 25 30 millimeter can you tell me why because of the pressure because of the higher compression ratio here the compression ratio will be limited to 9 or 10 maximum 11 there it goes up to 16.5 17 or 18 <coughs> because of the pressure there you have smaller and thicker uh, liner. This is just an example of uh, optical access using endoscope you can see this tube is what is endoscope and this is the eyepiece here. <coughs> now, the problem is that the endoscope at the end also there will be lens. Now, this lens will also experience the same problem that are experienced by a uh, cylinder liner in case of a optical engine. So, what you do is you actually have some kind of a tube which is also made of high quality quartz okay, and then you put it inside the cylinder head. So, when you look at the this is only half of the cylinder head that you see here this is half of the piston this is the bowl and this is the view this is the area from which you are watching you put this inside you can actually take this freely out in and out. Okay. So, the gla the gases will not leak everything is leak proof you put the uh, you put the endoscope inside and <coughs> now you see inside the engine when you want to view uh, everything is dark because it is all metal and if you want to see something you have to have some light otherwise you know there there has either the light has to be generated inside the combustion chamber or it has to be scattered. So, you need some extra light for illumination. <coughs> so, when you want to study the combustion there may be some light because of combustion, but in many of the cases the light is just not there. If it is a diesel engine combustion diesel engine you have soot formation and, be and then that soot burns. So, you can see some kind of yellow flames, but, but when it comes to uh, gasoline engine there is hardly anything I mean gasoline flames are almost invisible you cannot see them via a regular camera you need IR camera in order to see them. So, in a gasoline engine you cannot see anything. 
So, it is essential that you have some kind of a extra external lighting source. So, what is done is that you have a some kind of a optical fiber and there is a bulb somewhere and through that bulb the light is coming in and this light is actually uh, illuminating the zone of the interest. And then you put the endoscope from this side and then adjust you know the angle I showed you. You can if you if you rotate this uh, endoscope in this direction this cone will also move right. So, you can actually get a 360 degree view in a conical manner for the entire combustion chamber. No, this camera is outside 30 degree environment. Which one? This one, this one, this is quartz. So, so suppose this is my cylinder here, this is my piston, this is my cylinder head. I make a drill, I have made a drill, then I put a glass window, glass tube, and I seal it here. So, only this small glass tube is protruding out, and I do it in such a manner that my piston does not hate it and then this is sealed here and then in this I put the endoscope and then I can rotate this endoscope like this. No, no, no this is all sealed. See this quartz window is inserted inside a inside a steel tube and this steel tube has threads. So, in the cylinder head also you make there are lot there is lot of engineering that goes into it it is not that simple that you take a tube and put some kind of adhesive and fix it no there is lot of mechanical arrangement that is required. And in fact <coughs> you you are asking a very good question that there will be some heat interaction yes there will be some heat interaction, but that will be by via the mode of radiation not via leakage because this area you will have temperature as high as. 1500 2000 degree Kelvin and via quartz you will have radiations coming in and that will heat all this optics. So, quartz does not mind high temperature it is all taken care of when you design it its dimensions are so that the coefficient of thermal expansion it does not break because it is very small. See when the component is small the initial dimension is very small even when it is heated the, the degree by which the dimensions will change will not be as great is not it. <coughs> yeah, so suit deposition you will have the same problem of the suit deposition here as well, but they are not as severe because the area is very small they are not as severe you have to clean it. But the earlier in, in the, that case it was like 20 30 second here probably 2 minutes is ok, 2 minutes to 3 minutes is ok. <coughs> so, here you can see I illuminate this area and from here I am viewing in fact, if you look at this, uh, this area here. So, <coughs> so I think the light is coming from this side and this area is illuminated and you can see the spray coming out this is a gasoline direct injection spray and I am now viewing it through the endoscope. So, I can get a nice view this is my piston that is coming up. So, I can get a nice view of uh, the <coughs> spray that is happening inside the engine combustion chamber ok. <coughs> Towards the end maybe I will show you some interesting videos also. <coughs> <coughs> so, as I mentioned you know this is like full suit of uh, techniques that can be actually employed using optical diagnostics and when I say optical diagnostics I primarily mean optical engine not all of them can be employed via endoscopy. So, for example, PIV you can do scattering, Mi Raman and Rayleigh scattering, self emission spectroscopy, laser induced fluorescence. P, P lif planar laser induced fluorescence, LII laser induced incandescence, holography and LDV. So, many of these techniques are say for example, LDV for IC engine is pretty matured you can actually buy the tools commercially, hmm. but uh, other techniques are not so matured. 
So single cylinder combustion research engine supports the development of new combustion technology and engine design without the ins investment of multi cylinder prototype hardware. The advantage of this tool you have to think of this as a tool. This is suppose you have to develop for example, I am developing locomotive engine ok new I am working with Indian railways. Now, if locomotive engine I have to make some changes in the piston ok it is a 16 cylinder engine how many pistons will I need at least 16 I have to modify 16 pistons I have to modify 16 crankshaft whatever I do I have to you know connecting rods everything I has to be 16 that takes a lot of time and money and at the end of the experiment after half an hour I may determine that whatever I have done is all waste. So, all the money is gone all the time all the effort is gone. So, in order to cut down on the development I just test on one engine using one component if it is fine I go to multi scale. So, therefore, in that aspect you know if you are looking at multi cylinder prototype development single cylinder engine becomes extremely important tool with very quick turnaround time for development very cheap. There is very strong transferability to multi cylinder engine I can validate uh, my new concepts at lower cost I can exactly tailor to the customer requirement. Suppose I want to make a engine for Tata motors and Mahindra their single cylinder engines can be different somebody is using 17 compression ratio somebody is using 16.5 somebody is using a helical port somebody is using some other type of port I can take those all those requirement and build my single cylinder engine according to that. <coughs> the beauty of this system is that since we are going to play with lot of parameters ok the factor of safety in every thing that we do is very high ok and these are modular in nature. So, there is a very high structural integrity normally it is quite in thermal mode in thermal mode that means, no optical thing just the thermal part it has very strong components. So, even if you make a mistake even if, if you put double the energy the engine will not break ok the engines will maintain its structural integrity. Many a times when we use uh <coughs> diesel engines which are you know nowadays you know people are trying to reduce the factor of safety. So, when you reduce the factor of safety you are actually walking on very thin edge if you make a mistake the component will fail and the engine will break ok. In this case the factor of safety is quite high that gives you a lot of leeway <coughs> trying new things. Then single cylinder optical re research engine can be used in conjunction with transient dyno for greater control of the combustion process. For example, if you want to study HCCI combustion. Now, HCCI combustion can be studied only in certain speed and certain load conditions. Now, <coughs> you cannot start the engine on HCCI mode. So, you have to use a transient dyno transient dyno basically acts like a motor. So, it takes you to whatever rpm you want suppose 2000 rpm. So, now the engine is rotating at 2000 rpm already and then you start doing HCCI combustion and once the engine starts the same motor which was acting as a motor will now start acting as load and it will start absorbing power ok. So, this is this when you couple the single cylinder engine with transient dyno <coughs> it becomes a very potent combination. It provides real time images of various phenomena that is happening inside the combustion chamber such as spray flame propagation etcetera. So, that <coughs> the research team can develop new understanding of the combustion and reduction in fuel com, uh, fuel consumption. In fact, this uh, flame propagation and how the flames are happening what is the temperature distribution it is a very very important data for the modelers. They can use these images they can use this data to validate their models and then predict what is not possible with experiments. <coughs> so, I think uh, as I mentioned PIV I think we have shown you some of these images during the visit. What we do is we we have a laser beam which is circular we pass it through some kind of optics and make a sheet out of it very thin sheet which goes and illuminates the flow flow inside the engine combustion chamber. 
Now in this flow we put seed particles which are graphite particles normally and those illuminated seeds are they are, they are captured by CCD camera <coughs> and then the analysis can be done <coughs> to look at the sing, single cylinder flow. So, this facility was set up in 2010 in IIT Kanpur and uh, we have been constantly upgrading it uh, till 2015. This is first such facility in whole of South Asia in fact, two such facilities in first facilities in whole South Asia not, not just in India. <coughs> it is a small to uh, SUV kind of engine half litre 510 cc 85 to 90 millimetre. So, this is like Scorpio kind of engine you know half litre this is a tangential port and a swivel port it can produce 7 kilowatt, but this is 7 kilowatt in naturally aspirated mode if you want to turbocharge it we can extract more power out of it. It can go up to 4500 rpm which is pretty high for a diesel engine. It has a CRDI system common rural direct injection maximum fuel injection pressure of 1400 bar not state of the art state of the art now is 1600. We can change it, but I did not think it is was required <coughs> you can do up to 4 injections in one cycle. So, 2 pre injections one main injection and one post injection you can do in the same cycle. <coughs> maximum cylinder pressure that you can tolerate is up to 150 bar that means up to 150 bar there will be no structural damage. 2 walls inlet 2 walls outlet double overhead cam liner is wet uh, optical liner is dry. <coughs> so, these are the configurations you can see this is uh, thermal head this is the optical sorry this is the rear view and front view this is the there are a lot of other paraphernalia that is required with any optical cell. So, there are fuel tanks fuel conditioning system fuel pumps then there is the exhaust system there is the exhaust particle measurement system particle analyzers coolant conditioning system oil conditioning system air filtration systems. So, many many systems are required to support <coughs> such a system. So, thermodynamic head has endoscopic access we can actually do ECU calibration how many of you are aware with ECU calibration. So, ECU as you know most of the engines now have what you call as ECU ECU is electronic control unit. So, it basically controls the fuel injection timing and fuel injection duration and other uh, actuation things are controlled by ECU. So, whenever you are doing uh, whenever you are developing a new model of an engine you have to optimize the these parameters at every load and speed conditions. How it is optimized calibration may look like it is a programming it is a programming, but this program is actually achieved by multi objective optimization using experiments. So, you do experiments under various conditions changing conditions and each load and each speed condition <coughs> you pick up a optimum condition which gives you minimum fuel consumption and best uh, emissions lowest emissions. Now, you do, you do this mapping for each and every load condition in the entire uh, uh, envelope of your operating conditions and once you do that <coughs> you prepare the maps basically maps is nothing but library you prepare a library or a lookup table and then that thing goes into the ram of your ecu so once you make it for one model making it requires about 6 months of experiments once you make it and it requires several million dollars of expenditure once you make it if you are producing 1 million uh, engines of the same type it just has to be copied in each of the engine <coughs> so it's a very very important exercise in the engine development so, two pre and two post injections and one main injection actually this should be one post injection here. Uh, then injection pressure variations can be uh, done and then you know you can have actually all the combustion investigations uh, can be done rate of heat release mass burn fraction log p log v curve uh, combustion parameters etcetera. So, in the optical head you can do all the fundamental investigations related to combustion and pollution formation and you can look at spray visualization interaction with the air etcetera. <coughs> so, basically in the single cylinder engine in the bottom part as I mentioned 
in the top part it is made of glass, but if you want to look from the bottom the piston pin will come in the view it will block the view. So, to avoid that problem what you do is you have a very long piston okay. you have a very long piston instead of this small piston now you have like a piston which is more than one and a half feet or, or maybe 14 inches and you have your piston pin in the bottom and here you have a some kind of a slot and in that slot you have a 45 degree incline mirror. So, when the piston is moving up and down the you are getting a full view of the chamber the because the pin is always below the mirror. So, you have extended piston with a stationary 45 degree mirror and this mirror is actually not a part of the piston this mirror is a part of the cylinder block it is attached to the cylinder block and it is fixed it does not move. Okay. <coughs> Then it is a it has removable glass cylinders that form the optical bore there is an upper crankcase with hydraulic platform for mounting and release of the optical components. And as I mentioned you need to clean it very quickly. So, there has to be a quick release liner to enable easy and rapid maintenance and lower crankcase containing crankshaft and primary and secondary balance shafts are also there. <coughs> so, you can operate up to 5000 rpm in thermal mode. Uh, we operate up to maximum 2500 rpm in, in optical mode. <coughs> so, various things you can investigate we basically mainly investigate particle imaging velocimetry in cylinder flows using PIV is what we are looking at. And now we are also trying to look at uh, phase Doppler anemometry or what you call as phase Doppler interferometry. So, we are on also interested in finding out the droplet size distribution inside the engine combustion chamber. Now, the problem here we try to do this and we were almost ready to do our experiments. So, when we brought our system in the uh, in the test cell and we set everything up we realized that the piston goes very high up all the way to the TDC there is no optical access and then we realized that what a simple mistake we have made. See if you look at a diesel engine diesel engine has a bowl shape. Okay. So, that means all the clearance volume is inside this bowl. So, when the piston is coming up it will go all the way up there is no way you can put line into the cylinder no way it goes all the way up. So, there is no optical access there is no way you can put two laser beams into the cylinder and then we we were feeling so miserable we worked so hard to do this. So, then I have to purchase another engine and but this time we realized that high compression ratio engine will not be a good idea. So, we went for a low compression ratio engine which is a gasoline direct injection engine with a compression ratio of 12 which has a very big uh, optical access window and <coughs> we then we realized that now we can probably do the droplet size distribution. So, soon we are going to conduct this experiment <coughs> for the first time and you can also do laser induced fluorescence to look at concentration of different species and you can do suit distribution suit concentration inside the engine using li laser induced incandescence you can of course do uh, high speed imaging and you can look at flames flame growth flame propagation combustion etc <coughs> single cylinder engine can be used for a variety of purposes. So, this is something that you may be interested in suppose we want to set up this facility what all things we can do. So, first is that you can actually if you are developing any new fuel for diesel engine you can you can evaluate that fuel in the single cylinder engine you can study the combustion characteristics of diesel biodiesel or any other CI engine using in cylinder pressure and fuel line pressure data <coughs> heat release diagram you can figure out mass burn fraction etcetera. You can optimize the fuel injection timing and determine the optimum strategy. So, ECU calibration is also possible. So, suppose you want to work in collaboration with industry and tell them that hey guys I will do ECU calibration you do not need to go to AVL or FEV it is possible to do it using this tool. <coughs> if you want to measure the gaseous emissions and particulates from any fuel you can do that you can figure out particulate mass emissions you can do that uh, 
particle number, size distribution, you can look at particle composition, toxicity and how this changes with fuel injection pattern. Suppose I am doing one injection versus two injection, how it is affecting the toxicity of my particulates, I want to figure out, I can do that here. I want to figure out the change in particulate toxicity by changing in EGR, I can do that here, supercharging, boost pressure etcetera. <laughs> if you want to investigate fuel spray and atomization process, this is one of the best tools to actually look at the <laughs> fuel atomization. <coughs> Combustion visualization can be conducted up to very low speed as I mentioned because of the limitations on the quartz liner and piston top. However, if you are using endoscopic investigations, you can go up to 150 bar that means, you can do full load full speed experiments. <coughs> Okay, so, this is quite flexible, you can control a lot of parameters, you can even achieve HCCI investigations in this and ECU calibration for wide range of fuels can be done. <coughs> you can change different things such as air pressure, fuel injection pressures, injection patterns, injection timing etcetera, etcetera. <coughs> so, I think these are the components I mentioned, there is a th basic thermodynamic single engine then optical liner and piston, mirror housing, endoscopic installation, common rail system, flexible fuel injection system, AC dynamometer, gravimetric fuel consumption measurement, coolant conditioning system, lubricating oil conditioning system, air jet cooling system. So, this is the scary part of setting it up, we took about 5 years for us, no manufacturer in the world gives them as one package, you have to buy each one of them separately and then you have to take care of the integration and communication between these components. So, that that makes it very challenging. So, these are some of the views you can see these are the endoscopic windows. So, lighting unit one you can put one lighting unit in the other you can put the optical uh, endoscope into the system. This is the quartz liner I think you have seen this already yesterday demonstration was made to you. <coughs> this is the fully assembled engine. And here you can see that the height of the engine has actually increased quite a bit, why because now your piston is quite elongated. So, this this extra height goes into it. <coughs> so, this is the example of the optical piston, you can see this is the top part of the piston and this is the slot through which you put a 45 degree inclined mirror and here you put the piston pins. Okay, and this is the transparent liner. <coughs> now, this is the common rail system, uh, the common rail system has a pump which can generate any pressure that you want, then there is a common rail which is nothing but a high, high pressure storage device, it can store up to 375 ml of fuel at 1400 bar which is good enough for about 30 second or so. <coughs> okay. And then there are fuel injectors which are uh, solenoid which could be even uh, uh, piezo, piezo uh, injectors you can use and there is a engine management system EMS from a company called ETAS, it is a German company. So, they make a ETK system for controlling the fuel injection parameters and it comes with a hardware and it also comes with a software, software is called INCA, INCA is a pretty standard software. So, basically what you are doing is that you are doing multi objective optimization, you change lot of parameters and look at pow power, look at emissions and then you choose uh, the optimum points and make such a map and that is that is the map which is ready to go into production grid engines. <coughs> this is the transient dyno, this is a very very expensive device, uh, you it acts as a motor and load depending on whether the engine is on or not. <coughs> and then once it is acting as a load, it is generating AC and this what this does is it, it puts the current back into the grid. So, now when you want to put the current back into the grid, the sinusoidal wave has to be exactly matched because if it does not match, it will create noise, okay. noise in the power quality will deteriorate. So, the, the whole electronics to put it back into the grid makes it quite expensive. Then fuel conditioning system, you know fuel conditioning system uh, has a, it has a chiller, 
So basically it is like a refrigerator it cools the uh, fuel then it has a fuel conditioning system the idea of fuel conditioning system is to bring the temperature to the desired level suppose you set a temperature at 25. So, every time the temperature will be 25 given by conditioning system and then at what rate it is being consumed is fuel measurement system. So, three such devices different devices are used for fuel just for fuel just to make sure that you know you are you are giving fuel at a fixed temperature at a fixed pressure and you are measuring the fuel consumption rate. <coughs> this is the coolant conditioning system. So, coolant conditioning system the idea is very simple that because you know the cylinder uh, the thermal part the temperature need to be kept cool ok. Otherwise the thermal expansion will take place and that will pressurize the glass. So, you keep in this case you keep the coolant temperature to only 60 degree ok. So, that you do not crush the window and break it. So, this is the coolant conditioning system and there is a oil conditioning system. Again the oil conditioning system is used for providing lubricating oil at a certain temperature at a fixed temperature. So, this also needs to be very precisely controlled all these machines are extremely important we never use them for any regular uh, engine test cell we should, but we do not because these are expensive and but, but then for optical engine this is completely justified investment <coughs> you cannot afford a mistake here. And then you know the thing is that in the if you look at the optical engine the cylinder liner and the cylinder head cylinder head has uh, cooling because there is coolant going into the cylinder head cylinder liner which is optical also is having some kind of a flow from outside, but the piston window does not have any air flow. So, it becomes hot and if it becomes hot it may break. So, it needs to be cooled. So, what you do is you take 6 bar air and you put a air coming in from the bottom and you remove the heat. So, this is done by optical piston cooling. <coughs> I think this I have already shown you. So, you can do absorption spectroscopy scattering that means PIV emission spectroscopy high speed visualization using this optical engine. <coughs> so, now probably you will be able to appreciate these are some of the beautiful images uh, looks like modeling, but they are experiments uh, these are LIF images laser induced fluorescence etcetera. <coughs> you can do spray investigation all kind of spray investigations. You can look at NOx formation particulate matter formation hydrocarbon formation flame propagation pattern combustion behavior in cylinder air fuel distribution injection parameters etcetera. <coughs> so, you can do me imaging LIF LDV LDA different types of fuel injectors you can there are many te techniques by which you can do fuel injection for example, single fluid air assisted fuel injection solenoid fuel injection. So, you can investigate you know what is the difference. So, these are two actual separate event and we are assuming that they are same although there will be some cyclic variability. So, you this is the intake port. So, you can see there is a lot of uh, movement and velocity vectors around this area and this was the zone in which there was a lot of movement. This is 10 degree ATDC this is no, this is TDC, this is 10 degree ATDC, 20 degree ATDC. This zone that you see in the blue was the area where the flames have already taken place. So, once the flames have taken place, we have used olive oil droplets as the seeding material. So, in those areas, what will happen? The olive oil droplets will burn, and when the olive oil droplets will burn, you will not see anything. So, zones in which we are not getting any vectors, we considered them to be the boundary of flames. So, this was the boundary of the flame. So, this is how we I will play it very quickly. So, that you get a feeling of a movie. So, this is 20 we applied the spark at 25 BTDC. So, up to 15 there 10 there is nothing then this is TDC 10 and this is 20. When we deactivated one of the ports. So, now this port was deactivated inlet port this is 20 BTDC 10 BTDC. TDC 10 ATDC and 20 ATDC. So, here you can clearly see that the inlet port deactivation actually affects a 
the flame propagation and the in cylinder flows to a great degree. <coughs> Coming to the endoscopy, so endoscopy is being used in the engines for a very long time for different applications. These applications are in combustion research, in injection system development, in understanding mechanical motion and air fuel mixture formation. So, in the in combustion research you can figure out the ignition delay, I have shown you some movies. So, ignition delay how can you figure out? Ignition delay is the time between injection and flame. So, if you do a high speed visualization you can figure out how, how much is the distance between the two and you can figure out what is the ignition delay. Then flame propagation you can figure out, flame temperature distribution I have shown you already, spark ignition also you can figure out. In the, in, in the injection development you can look at spray, how the spray is behaving inside the engine combustion chamber. You can look at wall impingement, we have looked at piston impingement of the flames of the fuel. You can look at spray targeting, where you are targeting and where it is falling. <coughs> in mechanical motion you can look at valve train oscillations then investigations on any cyclic movement part. <coughs> you can also investigate uh, torsional vibrations, this is not my area, so I am not really much concerned about it. So, then you can look at air fuel mixture formation, wall wetting, fuel blow back into the intake port and spray development. So, in our lab we were most, most interested in combustion and sprays. So, this is the experimental setup of our lab that we developed in house. So, this was the engine, this was a generator engine, simple cheap 25,000 rupees worth generator engine that was converted into a optical uh, engine using endoscopy. So, we converted, we modified the cylinder head and this was the endoscope and here you can see this is the camera and then of course, we have to make a lot of arrangements, we have to keep this cool. So, this was the air, pressurized air was going in and this camera was communicating to the uh, software and the computer. Also, there was a shaft encoder. So, that was also talking to the computer and we could figure out at what crank angle, what is the image that we are getting. <coughs> so, this is the optical system um, for the optical interrogation system for the endoscopy. You can either use this or use a comp computer, you know we have both of these systems available in our lab. <coughs> now, these are some of the images that we captured. So, using these images we converted them into flame temperature distribution. So, this is why what I wanted to show you, we could figure out the flame temperature distribution and then we could also figure out what is the suit distribution in how in, in, in situ crank angle by crank angle. Now, this is this information actually is very difficult to uh, come by by any other experimental method. As I said you know in most of the experimental methods you get cycle average information not crank angle by crank angle information. One of the uh, things that one of the challenges that we faced in this particular experiment I have to share with you is that this camera that we used is having very fast shutter speed in nanoseconds but it is a slow camera, it is uh, only 15 frames per second. Now, if it is only 15 frames per second and somebody talks to you about making a movie of such a fast happening thing, you will just say are you joking, that will be your natural reaction. So, how do you make it happen? So, we kind of very, we developed a very smart strategy. The only lacuna was that we assumed that there is no cycle to cycle variation. In real life there is cycle to cycle variation, but we assumed obviously if you have to deal with challenges some assumptions have to be made. What we did was we had a shaft encoder which was giving us uh, one crank one pulse per crank angle degree. So, that means it would give us in one rotation of the crankshaft it will give us 360 pulses. So, what we did was that we we made a we took a microprocessor and we programmed it such that it will keep getting those pulses and after 1440 pulses 
1440 means 5 full cycles plus 1 that means 1441. So, at 1441 it will send a trigger to the camera to take an image. Okay. So, suppose in I took first image at 0 degree it will skip 5 cycles in the 6th cycle at, at 1 degree it will take another image. Then it will skip another 5 and then it 2 degree it will take another image 3 degree another image. So, in 500 cycles I will have 100 images which are separated by 1 degree and I played them to you and you did not figured out that this is not from the same movie. So, you cobble them together to make a movie. Okay. So, this is something I maybe if you want I can play this again to you. pretty reasonably uniform does not look very jerky and this also is looking reasonably ok. This is temperature distribution and this is the soot distribution yeah. Of course, there are yeah. I mean, especially not overall, overall also there will be see because no two cycle in a engine will be same reason is very simple you are dealing with a system which is vibrating. Once it vibrates whatever control you may do the valves closing opening will be slightly different from each other and that even that small minor change is enough to change the composition of the intake air or the amount of residual gas that is left and that is enough to change the fuel air mixture conditions, temperature conditions and that is enough to give you differences in flame temperature, soot distribution etcetera. So, if you want to do detailed investigation it is possible to do it here also, but we were not interested. See I tell you <coughs> what happens is that even when you do take a simple engine and even when you want to do combustion analysis there is cycle to cycle variation. If you open a Haywood's book and take 5 cycles of P theta you will find that the maximum pressure in any stable engine is off by 3 or 4 bar. Okay. So, now if ev every cycle is fluctuating by 3 or 4 bar you obviously cannot make any conclusions based on this which cycle do you take. So, in order to avoid this it is perfectly acceptable in combustion research that you take data for 250 cycles and average it. Once you average it whatever average you get if you take next 250 and average it they will be quite close or they will be almost same. So, cyclic averaging is what is done in combustion research in when you are talking about this thermal uh, part of it. When it comes to optical obviously, if you are dealing with a cold engine it gives a lot of soot. When it becomes warm obviously, the soot concentration goes up and you do not want to make biased approaches. So, what you do is even in the demonstration that we made yesterday if I was to do experiments we take that into account. So, what we do is we run the engine we run it for 20 seconds do not do experiment to 20 second and in the last 5 seconds you do the experiment and another 5 seconds for cooling off. So, that is how we plan it. So, we warm it for 20 second and quartz get reasonably warmed up in 20 seconds and once it is thermally stabilized then you take the data and then you allow it to cool off that is how you have to plan it. Skip firing is normally done in case of SI engines normally not in C A engines and the reason is that uh, normally SI engine temperatures are much higher than CI engines. Skip firing GDI engines and MPFI engines you do not in CI engines, but you can consider that as well. <coughs> so, as I said you know there is no standard practice you can 
it's it's like it's a tool that you can play the way you like it <coughs> so this was uh, the schematic that we made for our investigations and uh, we made the endoscopic excess system so this was the detail somebody wanted to ask how we may do it there is a protection sleeve there is a pressure sleeve there is an optical window so you can see this is made of stainless steel this is the quartz part and at the bottom it is rounded off this is the endoscope this is the ccd camera and this is the air filter to supply the uh, pressurized air and this is fairly complex actually i think in india only we have done endoscopy no industry has done it so far so so i think and then there is a lot of connectors for lenses etc cetera, etc cetera. and there is a camera control unit because you know the challenge that we had was that i had the option of buying it from a standard company which was costing me close to 250000 euro or the option of making it on our own so we went ahead and made it on our own it costed us maybe 30000 euro but then we had to made lot of control circuits we have to write our own software we could do that and things worked so as i mentioned the skip firing the, the five cycles is skip and then <coughs> this is the schematic for uh, in cylinder pressure measurement we have the pressure transducer here going to the charge amplifier then to the data acquisition system <coughs> and this is just we compared mineral diesel with bio diesel so these three images that you see this is the image for diesel and this is the image for bio diesel now when we convert it to temperature distribution this is the flame temperature distribution for diesel this is the flame temperature distribution for bio diesel so what you see here is that inside the cylinder flame temperature distribution is relatively lower in case of bio diesel that's how you see lower nox emissions and this is the soot distribution so here also you see the same thing <coughs> so use of bio diesel actually in our case has led to lower nox as well as lower pm emission and this was the first conclusive uh, evidence at least in india that we provided of why this happens and how this happens so uh, see basically what what you are doing is you are actually uh, capturing only the image so then you import this image into matlab and there are programs by which you can actually take the pixel and there is a hue value that you determine for each pixel and you can then relate it with the uh, temperature and you can also relate it with the with the soot <coughs> so we did a lot of investigations at different uh, loads i this was the calibration that i was talking to you about so this is the calibration plate and you can see if you just hold it nice and tight in front of you you will see everything square and uniform once you put it inside the optical window or watch it through the endoscope you will see that the whole situation is changed and so then you try to correct it and when you correct it this is the image so this looks more closer to this <coughs> so this was the image that we captured for the combustion its area was 88.47 mm square when we corrected this image the actual area came out to be 111.87 so actually this correction is very very important that each image has to be corrected for the distortion <coughs> so this is the uh, different fuels are given here this is the image for diesel at 5 degree btdc top dead center 5 degree atdc 20 10 degree 15 20 25 30 so this is diesel this is jetrofa biodiesel 20% this is jetrofa biodiesel 100% and this is i think karanja biodiesel no this is j100 jetrofa vegetable oil <coughs> and you can see the Uh, the ignition delay in every fuel is different very clearly it is seen from here and then you see the combustion duration is also very different you know here the flames are quite visible till very late here the flames get extinguished very quickly so this clearly shows that the behavior of the combustion is dependent on the fuel chemistry uh, carbon chain length etc etc <coughs> 
this is the special suit distribution. So, it tells you how the suit distribution is between different uh, fuels and this is the special temperature distribution. So, you can compare even the temperature distribution. So, even in case of straight vegetable oil you can see there are <coughs> zones in which you can see very high temperature okay, T D C and 5 degree A T D C very high temperature is visible inside the engine combustion chamber. <coughs> we try to relate it with the combustion analysis. So, this is the p theta diagram and this is the rate of heat release diagram. So, we related it with the crank angle position for example, this image is at 5 degree B T D C these images, this image is at T D C, this image is at 5 degree A T D C and so on and so forth. So, we compared four different fuels combustion images uh, and then we tried to relate it with the p theta diagram and and uh, rate of heat release diagrams. So, I do not want to go into details we can keep on discussing this this is flame temperature distribution. So, I think uh, that is all from my side. So, I have covered today the optical diagnostics uh, using optical engine and I have also discussed uh, the engine endoscopy if there are any questions I will be very happy to answer.